An axe came crashing through the closet door that Amelia hid behind. This body is wearing out, her nanny, Miss Agatha screamed. I need yours. Amelia, crouching in the closet, could not understand what had gotten into her nanny. The woman who had raised her since she had been eight years old was now... Oh, come on. What had gotten into her nanny, the woman who had raised her since she was eight years old, was now on her 16th birthday, terrorizing her, having suddenly turned into a monster. Uh, what? With a whack, the hole in the door was now big enough for Agatha to slip her hand through. And just as she was about to unlock the door, Amelia grabbed a coat hanger and scratched Agatha. Agatha screamed, and then it appeared that she seized up and, and with a thud fell down cold, dead, cold, stone cold dead. Amelia did not come out from the closet for the longest time, but then finally she did. And as she carefully walked past Agatha, Agatha sprang to life and grabbed Amelia. That night, Amelia said to her papa, Papa, I got trapped in the closet. The door wouldn't open, and when Agatha tried to free me, she had a heart attack, and she dropped dead right there in the, my bedroom. The father, not knowing if this was in jest or not, said, Oh, oh my God, Amelia, did you call the authorities? No. I thought it best to wait for you. Sure enough, Agatha was dead. The authorities were summoned, and the body was taken away. Um, years later. Amelia spotted two trackers from her planet. Not that, not that she was certain, but certain enough. Um, how did they find me, she thought. She fantasized about capturing one of the trackers and, um, and forcing him to tell her all about her planet and her people and what's been going on since she fled her kingdom. Uh, I've been hiding out on this planet for centuries, she thought to herself. Haven't you guys given up yet? It's not enough that my parents have been killed. My, my half-sister has stolen the crown and now sits upon the throne that is rightfully me mine. What more do you people want from me, she thought, screamed to herself. She, my half-sister, has had my life while I've been on the run always staying one step ahead of the track is until fleeing to this planet Earth with its ox oxygen atmosphere, which is deadly to our people, um, and finally feeling safe. After a long last, I, I found hosts, adventures, excitements. She thought to herself, and now it is all once again at risk. Um, well, th thought Amelia, in two days, Roxy, my charge will be 16, and then with a fresh body I will make my escape from this planet. I don't know why they are still pursuing me. I would never try to take the throne back. I couldn't. I, I, I just want to live. Roxy Rose Bhutan. Bastan, lying upon the floor, she could not move. She was frozen where she lay, but with her eyes open she could see her nanny Amelia wearing a crown. Awfully strange. And, um, um, and, uh, and Amelia was placing a stone upon Roxy's forehead. Uh, as Roxy breathed in, she began to feel further and further away. Just then she heard a commotion, and the house alarm went off. Why is the house alarm turned on during the day? She, Roxy thought to herself. As she saw Amelia take the crown off her head and, and place it down next to Roxy and hurry off with what looked like a lightsaber in her hand. Then her father, who, who had been summoned home by the alarms, found Roxy in a near catonic state. So he lifted her up and carried her to the car, and then he drove to the hospital. The hospital ran a lot of tests, but he seemed to recover, but she's... She she seemed to recover on her own. Amelia knew the weakness of the host bodies, and the trackers did not. 
So she held her own in the fight and, and even managed to jump into a car and flee with the track is hot on her heels. Roxy was afraid that she was still in danger. So that night, a little past midnight, um, she placed the stone back into the crown. There were 12 stones in the crown. And uh, she took the crown and a small shovel down to the cemetery near her house and buried the crown in a new grave that did not yet have a grass, did not have yet have any grass growing on it. That is how she knew it was a new grave. Uh, she read the marker on the grave, Carlo Khalidi. Then she walked away in, the, uh, in a sort of circle and made her way back uh, and found a spot near um, his grave uh, while crouching in the shadows and uh, so she could watch the grave and and without being seen. The next thing she knew, it was daylight. Oh, she must have dozed off and the grave was still safe. When she got home, the police were there and her father was worried. She told them that she must have um, walked in her sleep and wound up in the bushes. Uh, her dad told the cops to forget about it and uh, he slipped the cops some cash and said, here, let me make a contribution to the police fund. Well, thank you, Mr. Bustan. Well, we will take care of it. Roxy felt something strange when she looked at the cops, kind of a sixth sense, a warning of danger. The next day, Roxy, while walking down the street, saw the cruiser pull up, and they got out of the cruiser and ordered her to face the wall. She did, and as she did, she saw a blue light bouncing off of the wall. They were scanning her with some type of a device. She thought just then one of the cops' heads exploded and Roxy could smell grapefruit as she turned. Uh, dang. Let me find my place. I will make an escape. Uh, alarm went off. Amelia knew the weakness of those bodies. Roxy was afraid. Uh, uh, okay, Carlo, then she walked away in a circle. Okay. She told them that she must have walked in her sleep. This is where I left off. And woke up in some bushes. Her dad told the cops to forget about it as he slipped the cops some cash and said, here, let me make a contribution to the police fund. Uh, the next day, Roxy was walking down the street and uh, the cruiser pulled up. The cops got out of the cruiser and they ordered her to face the wall. She did, and as she did, she saw a blue light bouncing off of the wall. They were scanning her with some type of a device. She thought, just then one of the cops' heads exploded. And Roxy could smell grapefruit. And she turned around and saw the other cop and Amelia in a battle to the death. Um, Amelia didn't look so good. So when Amelia and the cop fell behind the far side of the cruiser, Roxy made a run.